Hello, Helgum. Welcome to Double Talk. Helgum? Was that because I was talking about spirituality? No. Helgum. I was sampling some Welcome of your kosher potato chips, Michael. And Welcome to Double Talk. My name is Mark Steffen. I'm Michael Mandel. Uh, we're at the last uh, day of Passover because tonight is no longer Passover. You know, Jewish holidays start and stop sundown. sundown. So getting rid of, you know, I've been eating these all week. And uh, no, you don't have to eat them. Yeah, you, know. you do. Well, you don't have to. I mean, okay, you go, know what? Once you start, they're really good. No. I mean, when I have them, I've been having them for breakfast. I like them with peanut butter and, peanut and jam on those. Those Very are good. good. They break too easy. They're like triscuits. I like uh, I like the butter and salt. Not too much salt. But also uh, uh, whipped cream cheese. Oh, cream cheese, that's very good. And what? if you get tired of Yehuda matzahs or Passover matzahs, Lay's, this green stripe, indicates these are kosher for Passover. And they say kosher for Passover all, the, right. all well, over the place. Michael, all potato all chips are place. kosher. Aren't not they? really. Everything is not kosher. I mean, you could kill a cow a kosher way, and you could kill a cow a non kosher way, and then the cow's not kosher. You have to have some rabbi. Palm he, olein oil. What is that? Palm o- olein. olein just means uh, it's like an olein oil. Olein is another word means. for oil. Where'd and you get? You got these at a grocery store? These are from Albertsons. We Albertsons. Got, special edition. Special potato chips. edition. Kosher for Passover. They taste pretty much the same as oh. Lay's potato chips, right? Under the supervision of some rabbi. You can't read Hebrew, can you? Yes. Badatz. Yeah, exactly. Chedav. Chedav. Jerusalem. Oh. <laughs> well, transliteration really Look, helps. Under, underwriter laboratory approved. That's true, Parva. Jerusalem. Anyway, so they're approved. We don't know if they were made in Jerusalem. We mm. just know that the rabbi probably came from Jerusalem. So this is why, you know, I was going to do a scotch tasting, then I realized you're not supposed to have scotch. You can't have scotch. On Passover. And even though I could eat a lot of other treif and all other stuff, uh, sometimes oh. you like to go by uh, some rules. You know, that's the whole point, to teach you to choose between your rules. So uh-huh. scotch being made out of barley fermented. I see. I decided we would go with grape fermented, uh, well, fermented grape alcohols. So the first one we're trying um, is a fermented apple uh, brandy, brandy, which is known as either Calvados or Calvados. People call it everything because right. it's French and nobody knows how to Calvados. speak. Calvados. 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 That would be Italian. Um, it's a... Uh, this is a really good one, so we, we might hate it. What? Um, I don't is know. It? It's a brand. You know, the thing about brandy, it's d- distilled to the point of extinction, except for some other uh, cogeners that give it flavor. Um, this is a 40% alcohol thing. Wine, you know, is anywhere about between 9 to 15 9 to, to 15, 16%. 16, yeah. well, let's taste it. Cheers. As this you know, is, uh, if you watch the show, we taste something on, on each show now. If you do watch the show, you must know it because that's what we do. Um, not all brandy is as strong, is it, Michael? Yeah, all brandy is as strong. Is it? Yeah, it's about 40%. 40%. Okay, I didn't realize yeah. that. Brandy is about 40%. You can do Armagnac. Well, you know, cognac is the brandy from cognac. From the region of cognac. Right, and brandy is made all over in every country. Corvassier. Corvassier is a good brandy. 40%. You think it's a little better, right? This is, you taste the apple. Yeah. Get your, get your uh, shot. Oh, he, he kicks it back. Sure, why not? And his eyes are still in his head. Oh, he needs, he needs some good. chips. It's good, isn't it? It's Burn. tasty, isn't it? I mean, it's Bernie. Well, well, we're going to talk about Bernie later. No, the entire crew here likes to try what, what, whatever we bring in. So we bring in just enough for them. Oh. So, okay, this is fine. Okay. You want to take a break and, uh, I mean, from uh, drinking the next one? The next one is an orange flavor, flavored brandy from California. Let's do the brandies right now. Okay, we'll do the brandies. I'll clear my palate with some water. Mm. This one, <clears throat> our friend Beth Pollock brought us back from uh, California. Orange brandy. Mm. Uh, you know, there are some drinks that you use Cointreau with. Yes, like uh, margaritas. Yes, and one of the drinks I made, I substituted this and it came out a lot better just because it's orange flavored, but it's got the heft of a brandy. Hmm. Cointreau sort of puts uh, other flavors in it. Well, orangey kind of. Orangey, mostly orangey. Where's this, that other glass here? But this is orangey. It's orangey, but it's it's not Cointreau. I mean, Cointreau right. is a brand name. Right, correct. And what's the brand name of this? The brand name of this is Grand California. Okay. Which I guess means nothing. But it too is 40% alcohol. That's his. 
my daughter's mine. <laughs> oh, like the, I, could, the I, crew. Could, I could tell the slavering on his Yes. Head. We'll taste this now. You could smell it. Oh, that's nice. It's kind of sweet. It's softer than the other one. Yes, yeah, much. It's very mild. What's the alcoholic content? Same thing, 40%. Really? 40% alcohol. True brandy. You never know it. it there's no burn. Yep, orange flavored brandy. You don't feel the burn. Awesome, huh? Yeah, this is you could drink a lot of this. This would be great on the rocks. This is the bar. <laughs> or if you want to just go on the beach, you don't have to stay on the rocks. That's true. It's quite delightful. Mm. More like an after dinner. So, sure. so Beth, your oh, brandy is an after dinner thing. Well, thanks, Beth. Enjoyed it very much. Um, we'll get to grappa after the break if we make it that far. Next time I come to Michael's house, I want to have some more of this. <laughs> we'll see. I've been finding good uses for that. So thanks again, Matt. She may be watching it. Yeah. And, and whoever else I know, if they want to taste this when they come over, just, just, <laughs> just ask. Just say, oh, we want to taste So we're going to talk about, what are we going to talk about? The La Vina Wine Festival. Well, that's going on right now. I have a potato chip. Keeping it in the... It's uh, still kosher. And topic. For, for us, it's still That's going on this weekend, as it does every year, down at the La Vina Winery, south of uh, town. <laughs> town. Yes. South of La Mesa. Yeah, it's pretty south. It's, it's south uh, of La it's Union. Really, it? Yeah, it's in La Union. South it's of La just, Union. Really? Although I think it's north of uh, Anthony, so. Yes, it is north of Anthony. Because mm. it's in New Mexico. Mm. Oh, there's wines. Now. You will find a host of wines down there that they make. You can spend your afternoon drinking wine. You really cannot spend an afternoon drinking brandy. It That's is. why, as you say, you'd like this as an after dinner drink. It'd be wonderful. After dinner, the only thing you can do after you drink this is go to bed. <laughs> but it depends on how much you've had to drink, how much wine you've had with dinner. You have wine with dinner. And how many cocktails you've had before dinner. That, that's a perfect night, which I, I can no longer sustain. Mm. Mm. What are I you mean, saying, Michael? You're getting, I'm getting old. old. Too old to drink all my life. But it's worth a shot anyway, isn't it? it oh, a shot, sure. Yeah, absolutely. So it's always worth a shot. So that's going on this weekend, Lavinia Wine Fest, Saturday and Sunday. Yes, and... We wine. changed our order here. Support we change New order? Mexico wines. No, that's the order. And well, uh, wait, you know, I went to the Lavinia Wine Festival when they first started. Yes. And apparently you get a little coupon, and they punch your little coupon, and you only get five drinks, Ooh. five tastes. And tastes of wine are like this. You can only buy one So you coupon. better focus. You could buy other coupons, but if you go to the New Mexico uh, Memorial Day Festival or Labor Day Festival, you get in and Open you get season, pretty baby. much limitless uh, taste. What you pay? We got, you got to focus. It's 20, like 20 bucks. 20 bucks to get in. It went up. Free glass. When I went, it was 10 bucks. I used to work there at it. That's a good way to do it. I worked for one of the wineries. You know what? All the people who work there, I get wine from. Mm. So they must be my friends. They so, give me wine. Also going on this weekend. What? Is the Country Music Festival downtown Las Cruces. Wow, what is it, the fourth or? I don't know. We went to it uh, last night. We were just there last, last night. night. How was the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band? We don't know yet because we didn't see them. They were awesome. I, you know, Nitty Gritty Dirt Band was from our college days. Well, My college days, probably you are pre-pubescent they were, they were, days. They were around in the, 60, in the 70s mm -hmm. and uh, the 80s. And they put out a great triple album of historical music. It's called uh, Country Music Forms a New Circle. Or Music Forms a New Circle. It's called Will a Circle Be Unbroken album. Brilliant album of some of the old timers like Mother Maybell Carter. Oh no! The Carter family. I got to listen to a bunch of old country. Music Vassar people. Clemens. I was uh, just going for the dirt. I just went there there last night. Yes. For the dirt, I wanted to hear the dirt music. Is that like grunge? Isn't that, what's oh, the difference no, no, between no. dirt and grunge music? Nitty bitty grunge music. Nitty gritty. Uh, gritty. You know, remember they had a big hit with Mr. Bojangles. Yeah. And um, which they didn't write, did they? I don't know who. Wrote no, they that. didn't write. Probably not. They wrote it. So. Well, you know, Sammy Davis Jr. made a brilliant uh, version Candy of that Man. song, and he didn't write it either. Third, did he write that? Mr. Maybe. Uh, also this weekend, since we're talking about things that are going on right now. Are we? Out at the university, uh, well, we have this band. That, oh, is that the band that's coming? That's the Dirt Band, yeah. Oh, and there's the Nitty Gritty. That was last night. That must be the band tonight. I don't know. Well, that's what they look like now. They probably do. If you've been watching uh, old groups, they're all like breaking no, apart. That's, there's Bree Bagwell. She's on tonight. And uh, no, I think she was... David Nail's on tonight as well. And somebody called Cam. Sounds more like a punk group, but I guess she's country. Cam. Cam, well... She's the second run. She's the second headliner under David, right before David okay. Nail. These are all professional 
uh, country music artists. Meaning so they get paid for it. They're at a good level of uh, professionalism. For us, yes. Now also this weekend we have the Drowsy Chaperone. We do. That's it, a play, a musical play out at the university. Theater. Won lots of uh, Emmys uh, or Tonys at, because uh, it was on uh, Broadway. It was on Broadway. And it was, it was uh, really good. It's been so playing for a long time. It's going to be this weekend. Did you say Brandon Brown was in it? Brandon Brown is in and it. We like Brandon. He, he's a riot by himself. Doesn't matter what he's doing. He's funny. And that'll be this weekend and next weekend also. The other thing he's not doing that uh, that could be funny is his hamburger place that he's going to try. <laughs> That's funny too that he's trying to do a hamburger. A hamburger place. He's on Kickstarter. If you want to help him get his uh, restaurant, I, I think off that the might ground. be over already. But you know, he's oh, got maybe. the perfect place. The place that gave him the idea of doing this, which is the Golden Bull. He wants to get get access to that. Well, he, if he did, it's it's for sale again. City available. It's sitting there. It's the old bagel place. So Brandon, get on it, get the place, they'll give it to you like for $30 a month. They're not making any money off it now. And uh, it's a good place. What's next here? Well, you, you mentioned something about Target earlier uh, in the green room. Did I mention Target? Because and, uh, they are a target of a Southern group that says, well, because you're allowing uh, transgender people to use your bathrooms, we are not going to uh, give you any business. And look at that transgender uh, little icon. I mean, I like that purple. Is that the official one with half a skirt? I like that, but it's purple because it's part of the pink and part of the blue, or is that red, or it's our color balance. Mm -hmm. But a lot of other stores other than Target have said they're not going to make any kind of rules about transgender, that, that you have to have had the operation, that you have to go to whatever your birth certificate mm -hmm. said, whatever you're born with is what you got to stick with. Which makes it a lot easier, but you know, if you have the gumption, if you get the balls to go through with the operation, or not, <laughs> afterwards, or go backwards, then you know, do it. You know, uh, recently I just read that they said you know they're afraid that that men, predatory men, yes. are going into ladies' uh, bathrooms, saying that they identify as a woman, because they identify as women, just so they could rape women in the bathroom, which they forget that men have been able to go to men's rooms where boys and other men go That's and different. the same thing could happen. It's still illegal to rape somebody, no right. matter what you pose as. Right, a rapist is a rapist. Now, yes. you see, in, in the case of a women's room, they go into stalls and they can lock the door. If a uh, woman goes into a men's room, because she wants to see men standing there, yeah, that's uh, really fun. doing what they do. That's really fun. They're right, right out in the open doing Just, what they do. Well, I mean, you would have to look over their shoulders. You're going, uh, oh, hmm. not Jewish, are you? Um, something like that. Well, no, they, they could look at me and say the say same you thing. are Jewish. <laughs> they would think I am. Yes. But, I mean, what's the fun of that? I mean, what are you going to do? Spend your time as a transgender person looking at other people's genitals? If, if you were a woman, you could look at as many men's genitals as you want because men are always willing to show them. Oh. There's a guy arrested, wasn't he, uh, this week because he was peeing in his backyard near a school or a park. Oh, and somebody saw and it. And somebody saw it. So he was arrested for two counts of public indecency. Or indecency. Whatever. They didn't get him for peeing. He just got well, him he, for did he, you know, something like that could cause a person to register as a sex offender for life. That's true. Uh, That's true. If he didn't have a good lawyer. That's true. That's yeah. why I pee a lot at home. Now, Trader Joe's. Oh. Which is not going to come to Las Cruces. And or which, El Paso. You know or what? would accept. Right. Because when you vote on something and you tell the city what you want, that doesn't help them make decisions. Nor does it tell me why. They won't come to Las Cruces because they only put their stores where they have, where they're close to one of their distribution centers. That's, oh. why, that's why there are two Trader Joe's in Albuquerque and one in Santa Fe. And but, there's one in Tucson, and we are mm -hmm. right between Tucson and Santa Fe. That's but, not that close. But there's nothing, but El Paso and Las Cruces aren't covered in the distribution. Uh, They're yeah. also talking about, the city's talking about, tell us the, the uh, places that you would like to come into town. Did you get that survey? I got that survey. Yeah, but you know what? That, that takes a plumb, that, that the city is going to determine who comes to town. The city does not make your decisions of what commercial companies come to town. The commercial companies do it based on uh, your demographic, and our demographic barely gets in Toucan and uh, natural grocers. 
And if Trader Joe's comes into town, they might as well take over. I'm sure you're all saying this is great. They might as well take over Toucan because they've just put Toucan out of business right. just from coming into well, town. Well, let's take a break and we'll talk more about this. I need a break. When I need we come a drink. Back. What, do you need, what do you say? Let's get a drink ready. We'll be back after these words. What do you want to try? We are trying this one next because this one is 45% alcohol. And what's this one? 40. <laughs> Gra grappa. Oh, yeah. I told you it was grappa. I know you did. Hi, I'm Cheryl Burke, and I have a confession to make. I have a serious crush on my workout. Hip, fun, and always a challenge. Jazzercise is the total package. It's the only workout that I've ever truly loved. Does it show? That's because I'm in the best shape of my life. What a difference Jazzercise makes. When's the last time your workout swept you off your feet? Find a class near you at jazzercise.com. Fiesta Motors. Come and see us today and discover why our service is second to none. In business for over 17 years, we have the right car for you. When you buy a vehicle from Fiesta Motors, we do everything possible to ensure your satisfaction. Located at the corner of El Paseo and Maine. See you there. Celebrate Fiesta Motors. We're buying a car. It's always a celebration. We're back. This is Double Talk. Mark. Michael. We're here. What are we, out of Look at out us. of advertisements so quickly? It just seemed fast, Michael. Maybe we should sell booze on uh, the line. I guess we can't do that. Sure we can. We are on to our next uh, non-grain beverage. Tasting, yes. And uh, this is the grappa section. I don't know if it, the, you out there have heard of grappa. It's an Italian brandy made out of leftover skins of the red gr of grapes, any it, kind of grapes. It's classified grape. as brandy. It is like a brandy. It could be considered a brandy. It's uh, this one we're drinking now is forty percent alcohol. It's distilled as much as brandy is. Uh, would this be considered drag the dregs? It would be considered the dregs. You make the dregs. On the other hand, skins. Germany has something called Mark. Which is made, which is a brandy made out of leftover uh, skins. Correct me if I'm wrong. And many countries make eau de vie, which is distilled of whatever you have left over. Yeah. Eau de vie. They don't waste anything. No. So this is not wasting Grappa. grapes. There's a town in Italy named Grappa, which is where we discovered it. But we, then we found out that everybody makes Grappa. Ah, okay. It's a little earthier than you're used to. It's not that bad. It's it's smooth and tasty. It's not yes. It's, it's bouquet, pretty good. It kind of is different than its palate. Yes, or than its smell. Yeah, well, the bouquet as its smell. It smells earthy. Yeah. He shook his head yes, which means he can do it. A little alcoholic because it's forty percent alcohol. Well, he has some of the orange left in his. Well, that's true. So, so you, you had a little gift there. Your <laughs> next one won't be so kind. Okay. This, by the way, is made from grapes from the Piedmont area, yeah. the northern area. This is definitely for sipping. Yeah, very sipping. Oh That's man, it. it's a good after dinner drink. It, it's not fruity. Not at all. But it's er it's herbally. 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 Probably because earthily herbally. Earthily herbally. This one is one of the larger companies in Italy. Now you don't find grappa in most stores, Michael. Where did you get this? You don't find grappa in most stores. Actually, when we go to Cape Cod, there is there is oh. a store that sells it in Cape Cod, but I think what about Kelly Liquors? Would they have it? They would probably have it. I think Feast in Tucson probably has it, and uh, Celebrate in uh, up on Telshore? Albuquerque. Oh, Albu Albuquerque. Oh, it's, not, it's Jubilation. In Jubilation, Albuquerque. not Celebrate. Two more. Well, now what are we calling this? This is uh, Grappa. This is a 45% alcohol oh, Grappa. This is made in uh, Montalcino, Tuscany. So it's made out of Tuscan leftovers. And Tuscany has very good leftovers. You know, they're the ones who make Chianti and Sangiovese. Uh, the Tuscany region has a lot of Tuscany food. region has great food. 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 It smells a little sweeter. And so it is. Still earthy. Got that. Grappa tone. There's no mistaking that, but it's it's sl slightly sweeter. Slightly sweeter. It's got less a little dry. bit more bite. Mm -hmm. But when you say less dry, 
Just slightly. It's not subtle. like it's not like it's uh, a subtle thing. Yeah, Definitely. it's not like the orange that you've tasted in there. Yeah. No, so it's not bad. Right on the rocks, this would not be bad. You could drink it on the rocks. Can you mix uh, grappa with things? You probably grappa would be wasting your grappa. How, well, it's expensive, isn't it? I, yeah, I think it is. So you yeah, certainly wouldn't want to waste it. No, it's it's like a fine brandy, really. Right, so it's the kind of thing you pull out when guests come over and hey, taste this. And you and you go, oh, they go, no thanks. <laughs> Hence, you have your grappa so for a long time. Yes, you do. You, have your, you know, when our daughter came back from a, a, like a summer in France, she worked with this uh, family and she said on the phone or she wrote, I don't remember, she said, they want to give me wine to take back. And we said, no, no. She was 14. <laughs> you can't bring wine into the country at Says 14. Who? At 14, you can't have wine at 14. You can't bring it into the country. I would guess. I wonder you're if customs not, would stop you. See, you're in Italy, 14. In Italy, that's not an issue. I know, but they we're not Italy. We're not 14. Italy. So she's bringing. She's so. And I was sad because she to get wine us. from France, they say she's working in France. She's working yes. in France. So she couldn't bring uh, uh, wine in. Wow. And she comes home. And she's unpacking her stuff, and she, she takes a bottle about this big out, and she goes, oh, the, the people gave me this. It was eau de vie. And it was actually made out of fermented apples. Uh -huh. That was uh, like uh, 15 years ago. We still have yeah. it. <laughs> Michael, I want to taste it next time I come over. <laughs> you tasted it 15 Did years I? ago. 15 probably. years ago. <laughs> and Maybe even I with did. you tasting it, it's still there. That's got to say something. <laughs> no, people have tasted it go, oh, my God. I mean, that's eau de vie. Eau de vie, it's... It's not necessarily noxious. You're just going, what? What is this? Why do they make that? Yes, they do because it's alcohol, and you can do it yourself. Apparently, oh. distilling alcohol is not that hard. No, oh. uh, people did it uh, all the time. That's right. Even even in the, the prehistoric ages. Well, the ancient monks kind of developed uh, beer brewing and wine making. And the Egyptians did. Yes. And uh, the Assyrians, mm. which are not the Syrians. The Abyssinians. Abyssinians. No. Abyssinian? No, the Assyrians. The Assyrians? Yes. Well, let's say the the, the Delta Valley between uh, Tigris and Euphrates. Oh, uh, it's the Fertile Valley. Yes. yes. The, anything that went rotten and turns into alcohol, they, they would drink. Sure, why What's not? that? Oh, testing. Well, so uh, that standardized testing this year was the second year for it, and apparently 90% less students and their parents protested doing it. 90% is significant. Well, I mean, really, it's... A lot. It means majority. like maybe three to ten kids uh, didn't. protested, and they just they, the reason is because they didn't make a big deal of it because they went through it last year and they found out it's not that big a deal. You're going to take a test, right? You take tests anyway. That's we what take tests all, about. all our lives. But this you take too many test. tests, I think. What do you know? <laughs> all, all I know is from the test I took. One, they didn't have standardized testing when you were a kid. Well, they had testing. Well, of course they had testing. The Iowa Basic Skills Test we had to take every year. So what? Where you had to fill in things Once just a like year. that. Once a year. I mean, that's fun. You, well, you work and sit there being bored out of your head yeah. all year long. Finally, you realize, oh, somebody was paying attention that I was not paying attention. Well, you sit in class. The teacher gives you a test based on the material that she's taught you. That's right. But those weren't standardized tests. Those were you know, individualized tests based on your class. Theoretically, they were standardized for your class because they're all the same tests for your class. Right. And for all your class, you have the whole these genre, are, you have are, the whole are, oeuvre. These are state-sponsored tests. Of material that you should be going over. This is the same argument, argument they went through last year that there was too many tests. So this year, they didn't complain. Ah. Or they complained far, far less. That's true. And also other uh, testing stuff is that uh, I think what our graduation rate is like down 0.4% ah. in our schools overall. Well, so don't complain about the test, complain about the students. Now, have we tasted it, everything? I guess we have. We have. Which one would you like to taste again? You really seem anxious. Hmm. Grappa, this is a, you know, the thing about grappa, this is a, sort of typical of the grappa bottle. They try to make them thin and pretty. This yes. is more typical, skinnier, delicate. I mean, you have something, this is like a half bottle of, uh, of uh, alcohol. What's a skinny? How long have you had this, Michael, this grappa? Oh, not longer than seven years. <laughs> grappa, oh, there they are, cheerleaders. Oh, here's the thing about cheerleaders. What about them? Do you want to read about cheerleaders? University of Washington posted some uh, 
rules of yes. if you want to try out for the, and these girls mm. would pass. These are pointers on how to yeah, be a good I would, cheerleader. I would pass them based on this. Uh, break down the dues. You should sport a bronzed uh, beachy glow. Mm -hmm. uh, wear girl about town lipstick. Okay, whatever that is. They, I don't know what, know what that, that is. is. We don't know what that is. Uh, be physically fit. I think that's a helpful thing. Obviously. You know, you have to be physically fit for this uh, show. Sure. Well, not all well, of you're supporting the athletes. That's true. This show, I'm saying. Okay. Uh, wear a solid black sports bra, which we both do, and a pair of mid-rise black shorts. Right. Show your midriff. That's you pretty good. That. I'm wearing both of those. Good. I could be going to an audition. Uh, yeah. Lace up your jazz shoes. Make sure your hair is voluminous and only partially hides your face. That's and, and it should be puffy. What you shouldn't do is have visible tattoos. That could be distracting, you know, because or disgusting. you're not supposed to be looking at tattoos. You're supposed to be looking at those things that nature gives you. Um, wear trendy colors. Don't wear trendy colors. That's not that trendy. That's white and black. Um, wear makeup that involves That's if you're trying nude out. lips. If you're That's trying if you're out. Trying out for the yes, spot. trying out. Yes. They'll give you whatever. Smoky eyes or hard lines. Mm. You know, I don't not know. Not too much makeup. Yes, don't do that. Um, these are these are tips that all women should go to. Do not wear a pair of high-waisted shorts. Okay. Did you want to see these? Or a shirt that covers your midriff. That's right. Because really, what we're looking at is your midriff. As we like midriff to see that possible. people did a lot of sit-ups to get this job. Absolutely. That's what we're aiming at, sit-ups. Okay. Now. Uh, or wear your hair slick back. Oh, yes. It's good advice for the girls. Now. now you know, hey, uh, we're running out of time. There's one girl who's trying out for a job. Oh, we who? Oh, Carly, Carly Fiorina. She is. She's a cheerleader for Ted Cruz. She is a cheerleader for Ted Cruz, but I think she passed her test. Although, <laughs> it's one of those. Yes. It's like speak of your last ditch effort to think about. Well, I'm not winning, so I'll drag her down with me. Right. And well, we're so, going to talk about it, several other politicians in the show, but we don't have. Well, the time. we're just going to. Yeah, we don't have time Bernie. for Bernie. We'll do Bernie. Bernie. We don't uh, have time for Kiki. Just give up. Kiki. Coffee what are house. You, what, I went oh. to Nessa's Coffee House today over in Picacho. Uh, it was a nice see, place. I, I had a muffin. It was very good. Uh, go on over there, see Nessa. What kind of muffin? It was uh, raspberry lemon. That sounds pretty good. Oh, it was good. The cafe Did she do scones? Oh, uh, B blueberry? I think so. I Let, love let's scones. move on because there's move things on. going on around. Oh, around out. town. Rio Grande Theater. That's oh, Pentatonix is coming Thursday. They're pretty good. Go online, uh, listen to them sing. They do amazing videos. Go on YouTube. Just do any Pentatonix thing. They have great videos, sort of like one of my favorite groups called uh, Pamplemousse. They do great videos too. Oh. Nobody listens to them, but. Well, it's a real grand theater coming up. Thursday as well. Madame Ur. Ur. So if you can't. May 7th. And that is sponsored by the Mexican Consulate, so I'm guessing it's free. Uh, I saw the, the last show the Mexican Consulate came with last year. It was oh, very God. good. Show. You know, we looked Excellent. up. We tried to look up Madame <laughs> Ur, and it, it's not there, but it doesn't matter because the Mexican, Mexican Consulate has been giving us great stuff. This may be the last one that they're sponsoring because things are shifting. Mm, okay. So go see that uh, May 7th. What <clears throat> else is going on? There must be something. Well, we talked about all the things going on around town, Michael, this weekend. It's else? a big oh. weekend. Uh, oh, World Wrestling. Oh, we're, we're still talking here. So World Wrestling uh, is live on Pan Am Center the same night, May 7th. So, and we'll talk about that next week. No, we can't because yeah. next week is going to be like oh. May 9th. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So, have some grappa, G-R-A-P-P-A. Yep. Get well, uh, Lita. And uh, do Mark's hair because we can't have it looking like a long Please. Point, point well, she hasn't done my hair for several weeks now. Sure. And it's obvious, I know. Cheers. <laughs>